Yeah, need that. Uh, right here, yeah. I had a lot of fun uh, announcing that I was going to be speaking at this conference on Twitter because uh, some of the multi-clouds and possible people immediately couldn't believe that such a conference existed and uh, immediately had some fun amplifying their doubt. And uh, I think stepping uh, into uh, the early days of this kind of discussion is always fun. It's what I enjoy. Uh, you know, uh, in about 2008 or 9, I hung out in San Francisco doing like cloud meetups. And at the time, everyone's like, that's impossible. You can never do everything you can do in a data center and this cloud thing, it'll never happen. But there was a ragtag group of us that had some conviction and believed in things like dominant design and standardization and could turn these compute things into utilities. And that's largely happened. And the fun part for me today is sort of like, well, what's the next 10 years and what's that look like? And I can't. Uh, you know, I don't have enough time to give you every thought I have about this, so what I'm going to do is give you a, a constrained set of thoughts. And I'm going to focus a little bit on my experience and maybe how that experience can be germane for you in thinking about this multi-cloud discussion. And, you know, I, I work at a company called Pivotal. We've now been uh, announced that it will be uh, acquired by VMware. Uh, for a couple billion dollars. And we basically built from zero to around half a billion dollars a year cloud native software platform that could run in any cloud. But we didn't really start off focusing on we're a multi cloud platform because that to me was too far from the immediacy of developer and business value. What we really did is we approached some of the largest organizations in the world and we said, well, what if you put developers first and how you thought about doing compute and IT? Uh, what if you focused on continuous delivery as a first principle? Platform around that idea first and around security and control. And what happened was that that platform also ran on every cloud. And I'm going to bring up uh, a friend of mine from Cerner, Rob Rose, who's been on that journey with us. And he can, you can hear it from Rob. But I think this is an important part of the discussion because if you do not start with what are the first principle problems you're trying to solve, just arbitrary abstraction layer on top of clouds for its own sake is almost worthy of trolling back and be like, why would you write some arbitrary layer on top of every cloud API in the world just to have it? But I don't think that's the discussion. I really think that developers getting to production is the discussion. I think that businesses differentiating themselves efficiently with software development is the real discussion in the room. And that's what Pivotal has been based on. I'm going to share a little bit about our perspective on that. I think what's happening is that there was this first wave of the first 10 years in cloud where the first mover advantages went to folks like Amazon and others that were first to cloud. But what's happening now is that the ethos and philosophy of cloud native is becoming bundled and packaged into these open source communities. I think these are the big four. And my posit to you is if you run your application estates primarily on technologies like this, the infrastructure that they run on becomes somewhat an arbitrary discussion other than some last mile config. And I think that over the next 10 years, the innovation is really going to come from these open communities. And I think that's the most exciting part of the multi-cloud discussion and why I'm here to support it today. Does that make sense, focusing on open in the next 10 years? People believe that? People believe it all comes from one office with all the smart people in one office. <laughs> I've worked for people who thought we had all the smart people before. They're not my boss anymore, you know? <laughs> That doesn't last. <laughs> Smart people are elsewhere, Bill Joy says, he's one of the founders of Sun. And I think that's going to be true in cloud. Uh, and so the other thing that happened was that this cloud native philosophy, I think, has been both around continuous delivery, distributed applications, and open source. And so these open communities are more and more the backbone. Like if you saw 13,000 people at KubeCon Barcelona, they're not there by accident. That's the backbone of this new cloud native community. And I think this is where I come back to a little bit of like, well, what is the problem we're trying to solve? You know, when someone says there's no such thing as multi-cloud, what are they really saying to you? And I like to say, like, a philosophy about designing a system is really just answering the question, how do I find my way around? Like, where are we trying to go? And I'm not trying to say that there's an abstraction layer that can solve this. <laughs> like, this is not the problem I'm here to tell you is easy to solve. Like, there are people who can't even figure out how to use some of the public clouds that they built <laughs> basis because they're at such a low level of interfaces that it's difficult for even them. And that's where our new parent company, VMware, actually has a really interesting offer, which is 
VMware on Amazon, Microsoft, or Google's hardware, because why reinvent how you're doing everything in your stack? You could just do what you're doing in the data center on compute on demand. But, so I'm not here to say that questions like this can be super easily solved, but I do think that there's this new philosophy around everything being developer first that's happening with the technologies that we're building systems with today that's gonna be able to be run on every cloud. And I think these are the questions that matter. These are the philosophical questions to focus on. And it's excited why, it's why I'm excited about uh, technology companies like Cockroach, because they're approaching the database market in a way that says, hey, how do I get operationally more declarative in what I'm doing, as opposed to having humans babysit this database all day and care for it? How can I put that into a CI CD pipeline, do declarative automation around it on the infrastructure of my choice? So I think Cockroach is one of the databases that fits into this new world. So really, our focus is on developers. I'll go through this quickly. We continue to bet on it. There's research now. Like, every philosophy needs science to come after it to prove it. The science here is, is that you have better mean time to recovery. You have better business results. You have uh, overall better business performance if you have more deployments. So if you make that path to production more stable and declarative for your developers, you're just gonna get better results all across your business. I think this is called the DORA report. It is the science behind the cloud native philosophy. Uh, at Pivotal, we've got this asset uh, called Spring Boot. Has anyone heard of Spring Boot? Some people, yeah. It's pretty popular. Uh, this was kind of a funny slide to me. Uh, it's a neck and neck race between Spring Boot and the older version of Spring as the number one Java thing in the world. Uh, a brutal battle inside the house. But what's more important to me is, is that start.spring.io right now has become the place that cloud apps are born. Every two seconds, a developer goes to start.spring.io and starts a new Java project. And they don't care where that runs. Uh, in that fabric of everything that Spring connects to now um, are technologies like Kafka, RabbitMQ, all of the latest in open source, and even all of the big clouds have come to us to put brokers into uh, the Spring framework for their cloud databases. So from that point on, if your developers are focused there at start.spring.io, these technologies can run everywhere. So I think this is a new kind of IT that's emerging. There's a focus on continuous delivery and less on the hyper-componentized swim lanes of ITIL. And this pervasive automation is really the birth of multi-cloud for me. When you focus on pervasive automation, you're gonna get multi-cloud as a second order effect. If you start saying, I wanna do multi-cloud ITIL, yeah, your pick list of individual components that you're trying to buy are gonna be disparate across those clouds. If you focus on pervasive automation first, you're gonna get multi-cloud as a benefit. People disagree with that or agree? People are already experiencing this. They have Spinnaker running in multiple clouds. If you focus on the pipeline first, it, it could be much more portable. <clears throat> so when I talk to CIOs about public cloud, I'm gonna share some thoughts quickly, and then we're gonna get Rob up on stage. What I try to do is I try to break the conversation down into three different phenomena that are happening. The first is what I would call the developer experience and innovation layer. And that's where these open communities have become dominant. There's no such thing as a single cloud version of Git clone. Like Git clone works everywhere there's code. Um, if you look at Amazon's version control offering, it didn't win, right? Because they're not really close to the developer workflow. But Git clone is there for every developer and they're Git cloning things like Spring Boot, like Kafka, like CockroachDB, Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, Knative, they're starting with these open technologies. And that's where over the next 10 years I believe there's gonna be the most innovation. I would focus your developer investments there. There's also the art of commodity sourcing, and this is where you know, cloud is the original 2008 vision where compute on demand, VMs on demand, networks on demand. And there I think you can have you know, rigorous reverse auction against the public cloud providers. The way that they're trying to stop you from reverse auctioning them, though, is this third category. And I think this is the interesting thing to watch, is the balance between category number one and category number three here. They're all trying to build more proprietary managed services and saying, since you need one of these, you better bake your entire dev tool chain into all of us. 
And that's where there's technologies like the Open Service Broker API within Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes that allow you to selectively whitelist just the, just the service that you want into your overall platform. And I would stop any public cloud sales rep from trying to design an entire system based only on these managed services that they offer with this philosophy, because this is how they're going to come at it. And I think over the next 10 years, my bet is that more and more open source innovation is going to obviate the need to even have these, except in rare cases. Does that make any sense as a philosophy? Make a bet? So when cloud people come at you saying there's only one cloud, I like to break it down into three zones. And a few CIOs know, that I know have found this useful. Uh, so our real challenge, you know, just to close out on where we're going, a, a pivotal, like what we think is more important in some ways is the real thing for enterprises is like, what are you going to do with all these monolithic apps that you have? Like, just hosting them is not really the interesting part to me. Like, I would like to understand what the journey looks like in recomposing them as an overall architecture. So we're making kind of a few bets in this space. And we continue to believe that putting your energy here into the application architecture is the way forward, as opposed to saying, which public cloud do I want to rehost? my legacy on today. Uh, we've done over 500 application transformation projects, and we've noticed that this event, tell, don't, ask, model, first model, really helps decompose. So I won't go too far into it. I've given other talks on this. But this is where these cloud native technologies and philosophies comes together. So that's a new kind of platform you can run on any cloud that you like. Uh, the final thing is that things like API gateways and integration have been proprietary hard to deploy. Uh, we have technologies like Spring Gateway Net, which are now putting API gateways right in developers' hands so they can CI, CD them very effectively. Doing integration in a developer-friendly way is a big breakthrough. And at our Spring One conference, Microsoft endorsed this philosophy. So I'll close with this. Microsoft got on stage, and they're saying they're making Spring Cloud and Spring Boot a first-class entity on Azure going forward. And the other cloud providers have pinged us since to ask for the same. And that's this era of a new platform that kind of takes you up to a higher level of developer productivity and that you get multi-cloud choice as a byproduct. So that's my philosophy. And I'd like to welcome uh, my friend Rob Bros, who's been leading um, some work at Cerner Corporation with us using this multi-cloud platform with Spring Boot. Hey, Rob. Thanks for coming out. Yeah.